Hi, my name is Mark Moritz. I'm an anthropologist at The Ohio State University, and I study pastoralists in West Africa and Southern Arabia. Um, today's presentation is part of a collaborative effort uh, that we do with SACINC, and SACINC is supported by the National Science Foundation in the United States. Uh, the goal of our collaboration is to do a synthesis of uh, empirical and theoretical work on pastoralist governments of common pool resources. And our goal is to explain and describe the diversity and dynamics of these systems and explain when or when not they are sustainable. Um, today's presentation um, consists of two parts. Uh, the first part describes the problem that most pastoral systems do not fit the conventional model of the commons. And the second part is uh, describes how we're working towards a synthesis uh, of this work. Um, most of my work has been in uh, Northern Cameroon uh, in the Lagone floodplain. And this picture shows pastoralist, or at least the cattle of the pastoralist entering the Lagone floodplain. And the interesting thing about the Lagone floodplain and this system is that thousands of people and hundred thousands of cattle move into the floodplain every year and there's access is open and free for all. So it doesn't matter the nationality, uh, the ethnicity, uh, the, whether somebody is wealthy or not, or whether they've been there before, uh, access is open and free for all. The other interesting things is that thing is that there's no tragedy of the commons. And so this is kind of unusual because the theory predicts that if there's open access, you would get a tragedy of the commons. The system in Cameroon is not the only one that functions like this. Uh, in fact, there are many pastoral systems that really do not fit the conventional model of the commons. And the conventional model, and I'm exaggerating here, uh, it, uh, of course, it's much more complex, is, has clearly defined boundaries for the resource system and the social system. It's relatively small in size, uh, the resources are relatively predictable, and they're central or collective decision making. And that's not the case for most of um, most pastoral systems. And in order to explain what happened in the far north region of Cameroon, I developed my own concept of open property regimes. And a comparative analysis of other systems shows that these systems have certain things in common and that they work as complex adaptive systems. So first, there's variability in spatial distribution of resources, mainly because of seasonality. And as a result, pastoralists are highly mobile um, in order to track those resources. And to make this system work, uh, there's open access to common pool resources. There are rules in this system, but the rules are really about supporting pastoralist access and mobility rather than restricting access. And in this system, it's the households that make in independent movement decisions. Um, and what you get is a self-organizing system without central or collective management of the resources. And one of the emergent properties of this system is an ideal free distribution in which the distribution of the grazing pressure matches the distribution of the grazing resources. And the other thing we find is that there's no tragedy of the commons. In the last 10 years, we've uh, examined this, um, this, 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 this topic uh, in, a, in a multiple studies. In this paper, we describe ethnographic research that shows how this system works. In this paper, we use spatial analysis to just show that pastoralists distribute themselves in an ideal free distribution. In this paper, we describe agent-based modeling work that describes um, how um, pastoralists get into an ideal free distribution. This paper describes a case comparison, shows that the far north region is not the only case with an open property regime, but there's others as well. And this paper uh, looks not only at pastoral systems, but also at foraging and fishery systems and horticultural systems and describes the conditions under which we find open property regimes and under which conditions we find uh, sustainable open property regimes. And so I want to highlight a few of the, uh, the what we call boundary conditions. And so we expect open property resist open property regimes to be sustainable when there's a low degree of circumscription, low external capital investments and low population densities. So the second part is about how we're gonna to work towards a synthesis. And our goal is to describe and explain pastoral property regimes. And so we start with the premise that there's four different, uh, the four basic property regimes, open property, common property, private property and state property. But the interesting thing is you find all these property regimes within one system. And so here I'm drawing on the work of Lance Robinson, 
who studied the Burana in southern Ethiopia, and he describes how within their system you find uh, village-owned common pastures, privately owned wells, and uh, distant pastures that are open access. And he calls this a mosaic of property regimes. Uh, practically all pastoral systems have such a mosaic. The case in the, in the far north of Cameroon also has a mosaic, but, the mo but there's variation in the complexity of these roots, uh, these mosaics. In fact, there's multiple dimensions in which these property regimes vary. And so some are more open, some are more closed. Some are more flexible and others are less flexible. Some have more of a mosaic and others have less of a mosaic. And some are more fuzzy, so the rules are not as clear and others are less fuzzy. And one of our goals is to see which, uh, how these dimensions of property regimes uh, correlate or are associated. The second part of our synthesis is to explain the variation in property regimes. And we've identified four key dynamics that explain the diversity and dynamics of these common property regimes. The first one is ecological dynamics. For example, how, in particular, how climate leads to greater uh, variability in spatial distribution of resources, resources. The second one are demographic dynamics and the growth of livestock populations, which leads to greater competition and potentially overgrazing. The third one are social dynamics, and so groups form in pastoral systems, and these groups may actually compete with each other, often using violence. And the fourth one are the political dynamics, and so pastoralists are not living in a world of just pastoralists, they're living in a world of nation states, and their states interfere with or affect the, these pastoral property regimes. I want to just give one example of how these dynamics play out, because there's mutually, or there's multiple uh, hypotheses uh, that explain the diversity and dynamics of these systems. So I'm just going to highlight one, and this is coming from the work of Roy Benke, who looked at multiple cases in East Africa and North Africa, and he showed that there's lots of competition between groups, particularly in areas that are weakly governed or ungoverned, so where there's no state. Um, and what um, he observes there is that um, these groups often have uh, com competes um, with each other, and that competition takes the form of raids or often uh, warfare. And that warfare may not be about uh, the grazing resources, may, about, may, may be about cattle or people, but it has an effect on the governments of uh, common pool resources. Finally, our goal, one of the next steps is that our synthesis will have an impact on policies regarding the governance of the pastoral lands. And we hope to build on the work of the um, FIO, the World Bank, and IUCN, who developed guidelines on pastoral governance. Um, but that's one of the next steps that we're doing. Uh, for now, I would like you to um, summarize the main points of or the main takeaways of this presentation. One is that uh, open access doesn't necessarily mean that there's no property regime. And so open property regimes is a particular property regime. Second, open property regimes do not necessarily have to lead to a tragedy of the commons. Um, in fact, open property regimes work very well for pastoral, pastoral systems because of the mobility of pastoralists. These systems are often equitable, efficient, as well as sustainable. And the fourth one is that there's considerable variation in pastoral property regimes. And understanding the variation in pastoral property regimes is critical for improving the policy uh, and governance of uh, pastoral lands. I want to thank you all for uh, um, listening to my presentation. I'm looking forward to your questions and comments. The, uh, the, the papers can be found on my website. And that's it. Thank you.